The Wreck of the Edmund Fitzgerald is a classic song that comes off like a true story, but this ballad may have taken a few liberties with the source material. You would think that a mournful dirge about a fatal shipwreck would be ill-suited for radio airplay and the Billboard Top 40, but leave it to the late Canadian troubadour Gordon Lightfoot to pull it off. Lightfoot's 1976 track, Wreck of the Edmund Fitzgerald, tells the tale of a ship breaking apart and sinking during a storm on the Great Lakes, an event that actually happened in 1975. Lightfoot got the general structure of the event correct, but he had to take certain liberties in order to produce a compelling narrative with consistent rhyme and meter. The SS Edmund Fitzgerald embarked on its last journey on November 9, 1975, the year before Gordon Lightfoot released its namesake song. The Fitzgerald set out from the docks at Burlington Northern Railroad in Wisconsin at the leftmost edge of Lake Superior. It was carrying over 26,000 tons of iron ore and was joined on its journey to Detroit by another ship, the Arthur M. Anderson. Following standard procedure for the journey, the Fitzgerald took the lead, and both ships sailed off with about a 10-mile gap separating them. When the ships headed out, their crews knew that a storm was approaching. This wasn't anything new, but less than an hour into the journey, the Fitzgerald reported having taken damage, presumably from waves. Captain McSorley of the Fitzgerald radioed Captain Cooper of the Anderson and said that they'd lost a rail, two vents, and that his ship was tilting to one side. They wanted to get to Wisconsin's Whitefish Point across the lake as fast as possible and continued on. At about 7 p.m., two massive waves hit the Anderson and headed toward the direction of the Fitzgerald. The ships lost radio contact and the Fitzgerald vanished. A three-day search began on November 14th, which eventually led to the discovery of the Fitzgerald's underwater wreckage a mere 17 miles away from Whitefish Point. In the wake of the tragedy, which resulted in the deaths of 29 people, the New York Times explains that Lightfoot was inspired to write about the incident when he read that the Mariner's Church of Detroit rang their bell 29 times after the news broke about the shipwreck to honor each person lost. According to WRKR, Lightfoot initially wanted to get every point about the story just right and was concerned about inaccuracies in the lyrics. A friend and producer Lenny Warrinker, however, told him that telling a good story was more important. Lightfoot took this advice to heart and told what might be considered a general tale of a shipwreck inspired by real events, rather than anything completely true to life. One line in Wreck of the Edmund Fitzgerald, for instance, says that the Fitzgerald had departed from a mill in Wisconsin and was en route to Cleveland, despite neither of those conditions being true. Similarly, as American songwriter notes, Lightfoot made the ship's cook a key character in the song, when in fact there's no knowledge of what he did or did not do during the Fitzgerald's voyage. The final verse also mentions a musty old hall in the Maritime Sailors' Cathedral, despite the fact that the cathedral is actually called the Mariner's Church of Detroit, and it happens to be fairly bright and clean. By most popular music standards, Wreck of Edmund Fitzgerald should not have been a hit. It's a radio-unfriendly six minutes long, fairly subdued, and no one involved in its authorship or production thought the song would even be a single. And yet, it not only garnered a lot of attention, sales, and praise, it reached number two on the Billboard charts, becoming Lightfoot's second most successful song to ever make that heralded list. The song also had the unintentional effect of popularizing the shipwreck of the SS Edmund Fitzgerald to the point that it became a kind of urban legend. Unfortunately, divers started treating the shipwreck as a kind of pilgrimage site, and as the Fitzgerald technically sunk on the Canadian side of Lake Superior, the Canadian government had to draft a law in 2006 to safeguard the wreckage. No divers have returned to the Fitzgerald since Rick's visit in 2004. Gordon Lightfoot, in an admirable gesture of respect, made adjustments to his song's lyrics over time in live performances to accommodate feedback regarding the song's accuracy and portrayal of events. For example, the New York Times tells us that he changed the lyrics to indicate that waves caused the shipwreck, not human error. WRKR also reported that some of the churchgoers at the Mariner's Church of Detroit disliked their church being characterized as a musty old hall, so Lightfoot changed the lyrics to rustic old hall. Ultimately, Lightfoot's song helped ensure that people never forget about the tragedy of the Fitzgerald sinking.